All right, so today we are working on a 2009 International Durastar with everybody's favorite engine, MaxForce DT. Customer complaint on this one is that once the engine gets up to operating temperature, it has a hard time restarting. We can see here we have a fault code logged in the engine computer, ICP unable to build during engine crank. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the engine hot, duplicate the problem and see if this fault code comes active as well. All right, so I was able to duplicate the problem Got the engine oil temperature above 200 degrees, and here's a snapshot of the engine cranking and not starting. Notice my engine speed. You can see the engine cranking right there, and also notice my injection control pressure. It's only getting up to about 450 PSI. That's too low for the engine to start. For those who don't know, it has to be closer to 1,000 PSI. So yeah, we do have an injection control pressure problem. Most likely a leak under the valve cover, but stay tuned because I'm going to show you how to check the IPR valve, high pressure oil pump, the IPR circuit, and I'm going to show you how to run the leak test also. So let's get to it. All right, so real quick, I want to show you my IPR harness that I made. It's just an IPR pigtail. You plug it into your IPR valve. And then the first step I do is while the problem is active, I send my own 12 volts and grounds to the IPR valve. If the truck starts, I know most likely I have a problem with my ECM or wiring, but in this case, the truck did not start. So what I'm gonna do next is a high pressure oil pump deadhead test. All right, so here I have my IPR harness plugged into the IPR valve. And I also took the fitting off of the head from the high pressure oil supply line, and I have it deadheaded with a gauge. We're gonna be full fielding this IPR valve by sending a full 12 volts and ground to it. And this will give us the maximum output of this pump, and it should be somewhere around 6,000 PSI. Now this is not recommended, but I'm working by myself, so I'm gonna jump start it right here. All right, got 12 volts in the ground to the IPR valve. Now let's crank it. Boom, 6,000 PSI. And also keep the IPR full fielded and watch for the pressure relief right here. It should be going down like this slowly. I have had some pumps that relieved the pressure too fast and it created the same symptoms. So this is a good reference video for you guys. All right, so here's what we know so far. ECM is good, the wiring is good, IPR valve is good, and the high pressure oil pump is also good. Next step, ICP leak test. All right, so I got the valve cover removed. I also reconnected the high pressure oil supply line from the pump back to the fitting on the head uh, because we're gonna be using the pump itself to pressurize the oil rail. And I'm also gonna be full fielding the IPR valve once again. Now I will tell you right now that this method is not recommended by the OE. This is just my method. I don't recommend you do it like this because we're getting the maximum potential of that pump, which is around 6,000 PSI, it's not very safe. Normally the ICP leak can be found right here where the injectors are at. There's an O-ring right there. It can either be the injector or the O-ring can be split itself. Now I'm gonna full field the IPR valve. I'm gonna crank on it and let's look for the leak. Yep, that's a big leak. I'm surprised the engine was still even starting and running even when it was cold. So it's not the injector, it's not the injector O-ring. There's actually an O-ring right there in between the oil rail and the head, which I'll show you here in a little bit where it's mounted, and that's what's leaking. So this is where the O-ring is at, right here in between the oil rail and the head. So I'm gonna remove the oil rail and let's take a look at it. Watch your fingers. I'm gonna lift it off and we're gonna look at the whole ring together. Yep, it's split open. I'll get you a closer look here in a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this O-ring as well as all the injector O-rings, which, which comes in a kit. It's an oil rail seal kit. And we'll retest it and, and we'll go from there. All right, so I got it resealed. Now let's retest it. I don't see any more leaks. What about you guys? Looks like this one's good to go. I'm gonna reassemble it 
and then road test it and that'll be it. If you enjoyed these full length videos, make sure you give it a like, comment, and thanks for watching.